Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'll show you how to add two-factor authentication to your Godot games entirely from within a single GD script. No add-ons or external libraries needed. And while two-factor authentication can be used with many different programs, I'll be using Google in this example. So if you'd like to follow along with me in this tutorial, navigate to the Google Developer Console. Go to Credentials, Create Credentials, and create a new OAuth Client ID. I'll be using this in conjunction with the YouTube Data V3 API, so go ahead and configure that in your API keys as well. Also, make sure you add yourself as a test user in the OAuth Consent Screen tab. So just a quick recap of two-factor authentication. Firstly, the user tries to sign in to a third-party application from within your app. We make an authorization request with that information and receive an authorization code in return. We then use the authorization code to make an access token request, receiving an access token. The access token then allows us to access the API on the user's behalf. So go ahead and create a new script, and in it we're going to define some constants. The first is going to be a port, which can really be whatever you want, a binding, which is just going to be your local host IP address, a client ID in secret, which should be provided by whichever third party you're using, so in this case the Google Developer Console. And then we're going to need the URLs for the authorization and token request servers, which you should be able to find in your respective documentation. Then we're going to create a new TCP server class to serve as our redirect server, and then create a redirect URI that includes our port and binding. And then we're just going to make some empty variables to hold our token and refresh tokens. Now we're going to cover the first part of two-factor authentication, making the authorization request. To do this, we'll need the ready and process virtual functions, as well as our own custom function, get auth code. You can see that I set process to false in the ready function and true in the get auth code function. This is because we'll be using the process function to listen for the authorization response code. All we're doing in this function is creating the URL that we can send the user to to sign into the third party application. This will obviously vary depending upon which third party you're using, but if you're using Google, it should look very much the same except we change the scope parameter. The last line of this function opens the URL in a new window for the user to sign in. Now we'll set up the process function to listen for the authorization response code. Here we'll continuously pull the redirect server to see if there's a new connection available, and if it is, we'll take that connection and turn it into a string. The way you extract the authorization code from the response string depends on how the third party you're using has formatted it. This worked for me using Google. Now we can test this out and see if it's working by printing the auth code and running the get auth code function from the ready function. When I run it, you can see that it opens the Google OAuth 2 flow in my default browser. After completing the flow, you can see that it leaves us with an error screen, but we'll fix that later. You can also see that the authorization code has been printed in the output. Now that we have the authorization code, we can use that to format the access token request. We'll create a second custom function that takes the auth code as a parameter and returns the token. We'll call this in the process function after we receive the auth code, making sure to set the process to false so that way we don't keep polling. In this function, we're formatting an HTTP POST request to the token request server. You can see that I create a variable for the headers and for the body of the HTTP request. Then we'll create a new instance of Godot's HTTP request class and add it as a child. Then we'll call the request method as a POST request with the header and bodies we just created. The output of the request function is an error value that we can use to make sure everything went smoothly. Then we'll yield for the HTTP requests request completed signal. The yield function will return the signal's return value, so we'll capture that in a variable called response. The third element of the request completed signal's return value is the response body. We'll decode it from UTF-8 and then handle it as a JSON. We'll then store the access and refresh tokens in their respective variables. We'll also want to emit our custom signal token received, which I'll make right now at the top. Now we have an access token. Unfortunately, this will expire pretty quickly. To prevent our user from having to go through this whole flow every few hours, we can use a refresh token. For the refresh flow, we'll need to make two custom functions. One, to check if the token is still valid, and two, to actually refresh the token. To check if the token is valid, we'll first check if the token variable has been defined. The addition of this yield function just prevents some errors that will arise in the future. The rest of this function is just doing as we have previously in formatting an HTTP request. Just as we did previously, we'll format the request as a POST request. Then, we'll capture the response by yielding for the request completed signal. We'll get the expiration from the response. Usually expressed in milliseconds, we'll return true if this value is greater than zero. We'll also again emit the token receive signal. If our token is invalid, we'll need to create a refresh request. 
We'll format the request just the same as before, except this time we'll include the refresh token and specify that the grant type is a refresh request. We'll check if the response has the access token. If it does, we'll capture the token, emit the token receive signal, and return true. If it doesn't, that means the refresh token has expired and we'll need to make our user sign in again. Now that we've completed the OAuth2 flow, all we need to do is create a higher level function to organize our code. Here I'll make a custom function with a series of nested if statements. We can yield for each of our functions completed signals to ensure they get their respective responses. You can see I've also made a comment load tokens because the next thing on our agenda is to make a save and load system for our token and refresh tokens. Here are the save and load functions. They're pretty bread and butter, so I won't go over them in too much detail. I haven't added any security to these, but if you're using this in a production environment, you'll definitely want to. Now we'll just put the save tokens function in the refresh tokens and get token from auth functions. Finally, we'll put the load tokens function at the beginning of our authorize function. All that's left to do now is fix this error page that's shown when the user tries to sign in. We can do this by sending an HTML file back to the redirect server after it sends us the authorization code. We'll need to get the HTML file as a string in order to send to the server. You could either manually write this in or load it from an HTML file. Here's a simple function I made that does just that. Then we just use the following two lines of code to send our data to the server. Note that I've saved my HTML file to the project data folder. You could also save this in your project directory, just make sure you allow for it in your export settings. By connecting the authorize function with the sign in with Google button, we're able to get a pretty professional looking OAuth2 flow. Here's the HTML page I made, and on returning to the game, you can see that I've populated it with my username and profile picture. Feel free to check out the GitHub project in the description to see how I did this. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please drop a like below and potentially subscribe to my channel. Also, maybe check out one of these two videos, you know, whatever floats your boat. So thanks so much for watching and have a great day.